in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed John chapter 20 and many verse 30 thank you many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not written in this book next verse please 31 it says but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name so it is true that it is not everything that happened that was recorded in scripture but by the intelligence of the spirit the scripture as contained in this already has with the breath of the spirit the leadership of the spirit can supply you every kind of growth you seek it doesn't mean that extra biblical materials concordances and all of the rest are bad but you must be guided there are many believers who have not been guided and they started reading all kinds of books books that start teaching you about consciousness and start exposing you you start exposing some of those things they are saying are not lies but they are very deep spiritual things it takes a level of stability in the spirit and conviction to dare those materials because they sustain the power to sway you be careful in a bid to look for a salmon, many of us have traveled into hellfire to go and get messages there and you never return again because you got there in a search for mysteries and, and people return with all kinds of things. May we be grounded and established in the truth in the name of Jesus Christ. In America today, there are many young children who are already demonized because of being exposed to several materials. Unfortunately, there are many institutions that teach some of these courses and even recommend them to children. And they open up themselves and you find children asking parents questions that they cannot answer. Parents, may God grant us grace. Hear me. May God grant grace. To know where to send your child to just because the school fees is much does not mean it is a good school there are many many schools that you can pay whatever million and with it you are paying the money for your child's death we need to manage it because sometimes in a bit to justify the amount of money that was spent people introduce all kinds of programs they bring all kinds, respectfully speaking, this is, these are my opinions based on scripture. All kinds of therapies and psychologies and some of these people don't fear God and they start asking the children questions until, until something happens to your children that you do not understand. Somebody shout God forbid. <laughs> Prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture hallelujah number four what is the fourth biblical key that controls longevity are you ready honor to parents honor to parents honor to parents both physical and spiritual honor to parents Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3. Please give it to us. Honor to parents, the fourth key now. Children, it says, obey your parents in the Lord. Please take note of the expression in the Lord. It didn't say children, obey your parents anyhow, whatever they said. Mm -mm. 
children obey your parents in the Lord that means the parents are not the final say the Word of God is final say I need to say this I am an advocate of honor but we need to be careful because many people have been derailed because of this scripture and because it was misunderstood obey your parents in the Lord for this is right verse 2 it says honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with promise verse 3 that it may be well with thee and that thou mightest live long upon the earth please look up the spirit of rebellion the spirit of dishonor will always cut short the life of the victim unfortunately our generation except God helps us corporately we're beginning to embrace dishonor it's beginning to be fashionable people say it doesn't matter it's my life but you see there are laws I pray that dishonor will not make our generation cost because of the ill speakings that come from the pain of parents hallelujah there are many many people today that it is not well with them because they have secured the causes and the ill speakings of parents and let me tell you when it has to do with parents bar whether they are born again or not by reason of being parents or being in a position of parents there is authority that was given to them they can speak and the realm of the spirit will obey and let me declare over someone if either by your mistake or maybe your past or not having any knowledge you have secured the cause or the ill speaking of any parent any father any mother physically or spiritually by the mystery of the blood and the mercy of God that statement is cancelled right now yeah. hallelujah now I must bring a disclaimer we men of God like scriptures like this unfortunately because it has been a useful tool for manipulation through the years. There is a balance to this. It does not mean just because people are asked to honor leaders, spiritual leaders especially, it does not mean that people should remove their brains and throw away and become children and become fools. No. There is intelligence in our faith work. Are we together now? Yes. So there is a balance. However, Honor still remains a potent spiritual law that is responsible for longevity. Honor your father and your mother. Some of you, by this teaching, you may need to call, even if it's your physical parents, and just tell them, listen, I'm sorry. The other day I shouted and insulted you and said, go to hell. It's just my foolishness. Accept that I'm just a child. I came for koinonia, and God used the apostle to drum sense into my head, mama, I am sorry. I desire to live long. And some of these are little children who insult everybody based on the movie, hold their hands, tap it two or three times and sit them down, show them a scripture and say, listen, young man, if you want to live long, do not make it marketable to insult everybody. Don't say it's just a little boy. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Not the rod of wickedness, the rod of correction. Hallelujah. Is someone learning honor honor to parents honor to fathers when God plants you within a ministry honor the authority structure that he has put there are we together this spirit of rebellion that many have carried has has become their own becoming you continue to spell destruction for yourself it ought not to be so there is a way that the kingdom operates if we are together, say amen. amen. Honor to parents. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20. Proverbs 20, 20. In fact, when we read it, let's see how we can try NIV. The Bible says, Whoso cursed his father or his mother, listen carefully, he said his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Let me tell you how it works in the spirit. If a father fights his son, he loses his honor. If a son fights his father, he loses his life. There are allocations to these offenses in the spirit. You see that? Yes. Same scripture, 2020. If a man causes his father or mother, he says his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. 
This is true. There are many, many people who have put themselves in this unfortunate condition, physically and spiritually across the globe because of lack of intelligence. And remember, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Number five. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone learning? What is the fifth key? Are you ready? Engaging the mystery of the communion. The fifth key that is responsible for longevity. Engaging with understanding the mystery of the communion. Engaging the mystery of the communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please, from verse 24. Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he was now speaking about the Lord's body. We are reading to 30. Please pay attention. And he that had, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 25. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now he begins to warn. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. He says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, it is that serious that it has a spiritual implication. You shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. To 30 now. He says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. What does it mean to eat and drink unworthily? Without discernment and without revelation and without honor. He says, he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's read 30 together. One, two, read. For this cause... Many are weak, many are sickly among you, and many sleep. It didn't say few. That means there are many people today who have gone to the grave and their offense is that they did not discern the Lord's body. I've had all kinds of teachings and opinions about the communion. I can tell you by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible. The communion with understanding is a deep spiritual mystery it can be idolized unfortunately like it has happened respectfully speaking across the body where people have turned the communion like a like a charm that does not contain any power do you understand remember you are the one who made the bread and you are the one who made the cup and you are now taking it so it is not that bread and cup that will give you life there is a revelation that releases the power of God upon those tokens of communion I am an advocate of the communion but I am NOT an advocate of religiosity without revelation the key is understanding not ritual you can be involved in the ritual of the communion and believe me you will not receive anything from it hallelujah there are people who just carry wafers, just squeeze it or bread. They just squeeze one slice or one loaf and just take tea or take something and believe they took the communion. No. The communion is not about hunger. Remember in the book of the first Corinthians, there were people who were taking it unworthily because at that time it was wine. And Paul found out that people were getting drunk after you know, the remaining part of the, the, the communion set that they leave when the service is over. Some people were taking it and don't mind all these guys. And Paul had to preach and say, you guys are making a mess of this thing. You can bring damnation upon yourself. There are stories of people who with childlike faith believed in the mystery of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And they engaged the communion with understanding and it flushed out all kinds of demonic things in their body. You know the power and the mystery of blood. You see, in communicating spiritual truth, it is not really the activity that carries power. It is the understanding that supports what you are doing. Are we together? But I can tell you by the authority of scripture 
in my life and based on the experience of the patriarchs and those who have gone ahead of us the communion with understanding is a deep and powerful mystery and what you are taking does not have to be color red for it to be communion even if it is water and wafers is is a mystery you just take that to help your mind assimilate and believe communion there are times with understanding you can gather your family and say in the name of Jesus we stand by faith believing in the authority of the Word of God and you engage that communion and watch the wonder working power of the blood and body of Jesus hallelujah let me give you two more scriptures in Exodus chapter 12 let's go to 7 and 8 then we'll jump to 12 and 13 watch this the mystery of the blood now and they shall take of the blood the angel of death is about to pass over the land of Egypt and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it verse 8 and they shall eat the flesh that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it jump to verse 12 please for sake of time it says for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and i will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt i will execute judgment i am the lord thy god verse 13 it says and the blood shall be to you for a what a token upon the houses where ye are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt go to verse 23 verse 23 now it says for the lord will pass through to smite the egyptians and when he seared the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts the lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses and to smite you the fifth key is engaging the mystery of the communion if someone is with me say amen. amen please I want you to pay attention to what I'm teaching you because it contains tremendous power tremendous power are you ready for number six we'll soon find somewhere to pray what is the sixth key that controls longevity are you ready master the art of spiritual warfare master the art of spiritual warfare mm, there is a warfare dimension for longevity master the art of spiritual warfare the Bible is very clear as to the fact that Satan and his cohorts using the guise of witchcraft wizardry necromancy sorcery activities of dark power that he will continually launch attack against the saints he says and i will build my church and the gates of hell jesus recognized the presence of the gates of hell even jesus is called the head of principalities and powers the Bible recognizes their existence. It will be child's play to just ignore it and believe that without engaging the world through intelligence, that by default, those arsenals will not come. Even Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and did not find anything. Spiritual warfare. You must know how to take authority over the spirit of death. You must know how to take authority over infirmity, over destructions, over wasters. This is the assignment of spiritual warfare. Let's look at two or three scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 13. Let's start from 17. Ezekiel 13, 17. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people he says give us niv give us niv i want you to understand what is there okay son of man set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination prophesy against them let's hurry up next verse 
it says and say this is what the sovereign lord says woe to the women who sew magic charms on their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their head in order to ensnare people is that in your bible he said, woe to these kinds of people. They tie all kinds of things. They get, they fraternize with the realm of the spirit as tokens and mediums to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own 19? He says, you have profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread by lying to my people who listen to lies. You have killed those who should not have died and have spared those who should not have lived. 20. It says, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against your magic charms, which you ensnare people like birds, and I will tear them from your arms. I will set free the people that you have ensnared like birds. Uh-huh. Next verse, please. We're reading down to 23, 21. I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands, and they will no longer fall prey to your power. Then you will know that I am the Lord I, I am the Lord because you disheartened the righteous with your lies when I had brought them no grief and because you encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways and so to save their lives. Last verse. Therefore you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. I will save my people from your hands and then you will know that I am the Lord. If you believe that say amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I, I hate to play with your mind, but believe me when I tell you, there are people on earth who have fraternized with the devil perpetually. Access to divination, access to all kinds of sorcery, necromancy, activities with the constellation, making use of mediums, animals, all against the lives and the destinies of people. This is true. There is victory in Christ, but it is engaged with knowledge. The victory in Christ does not happen arbitrarily. Not even the death on the cross automatically saves sinners until they place their faith by believing in their heart and declaring the Lordship of Jesus. That is only when, that was the only condition for salvation to be activated. So Jesus has died, risen, exalted, and yet many people still go to hell. That is the same way salvation, healing, deliverance has been purchased. But just believing that because it is finished in Christ, it means it is finished in your life. Without engaging it, it will not happen. What does warfare entail? Number one, standing based on the word of God to enforce your authority. Warfare entails standing to enforce your authority based on the word of God, not based on emotions, not based on sentiment, not based on religious chants and rituals. The basis for the believer's victory is what is written, not what I want, not what I wish. There are many chants and rituals that sincerely and respectfully speaking are only a waste of time. The only component in a believer's speaking and prayer that commands power is that which is in line with scripture. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 11. Proverbs 1, 11. It says, my son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Next verse. It says, let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. Reading to 16, verse 13. We shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our house with spoil. Look at the wicked imaginations. Cast in thy lot among us let us all have one purse 15 it says my son walk down not in the way with them refrain from the foot of their path 16 the last verse it says for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood believers please look at me spiritual warfare from a biblical standpoint and from a standpoint of victory is necessary for maintaining your longevity 
for as long as you live you remain a candidate for Satan's attack a potential candidate the Bible says now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph are we together Paul said I desire to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us Satan is still on earth there, the Bible has never told us that his ministry has ended read your Bible the Bible tells us that victory over him is settled but the Bible never says Satan has been prohibited from doing the things that he's doing he still runs to and fro like a roaring like 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 a uh, what they call it now that he runs to and fro like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour may he not find you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says and having done all to stand stand why would Paul be teaching you about the the warfare armory are we together he says to put the whole armor of God remember it was the same Paul that gave us the exegesis of the, the Pauline epistle the entire exegesis of redemption yet he teaches you that it is true that you are seated exalted with Christ but haven't done all to stand stand for many of us we are not consistent with our prayer for others who are consistent with prayer but from a standpoint of fear and defeat listen you don't pray to make victory happen you pray to establish victory that is already in Christ there is a big difference there is praying and you feel okay now let me push a little more and the devil will give way as emotional as that sounds you are already defeated believe me except this Bible is not true nobody prays from a standpoint of weakness and wins so spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing I have taught you it is not the prayer that produces the victory the prayer simply transports that which is finished in Christ and stamps it as a reality upon your life Is it not amazing that Jesus prayed before, during, and even after his resurrection? Today that he's seated, exalted as Lord and Christ, he's still making intercession for the saints. Is he not conscious of his victory over the saints that he's still making intercession? Why will he still be interceding when he said it is finished? The fact that Jesus is still praying for you should let you know that he's aware that Satan is still on earth waging war against the saints why would jesus be interceding for you he would have said don't say anything again victory is sure jesus the intercessor proves that evil is still at work hallelujah you must master the art of spiritual warfare believers please hear me the times that we live in right now especially if you're a man and a woman of god in ministry you must pray you must understand warfare i'm speaking with respect to longevity but warfare covers every aspect of your life you are privileged to lead a ministry you must pray for your people father in the name of jesus protect them preserve them you don't know who is traveling and who is returning it is your responsibility part of your priesthood responsibility is to lift up the people that god has given to you listen to what jesus said all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost lost through what various ways you can ask the Lord believe me I'm not exaggerating more than 80% of my prayers is not for myself Lord help your people to encounter you protect them protect them that was the wisdom of Job the Bible says Job prayed for his children just in case just in case they went out to party and they returned back like madmen just in case he prayed parents do you pray for your children or do you just give them money leaders do you pray for the people god has given you don't take satan for granted it's not about fear satan is determined even over jesus i hope you know that satan does not fear there is no record in scripture that Satan is associated with fear. He flees as a result of an instruction, not fear. Satan is every other thing but fearful and foolish. 
two things you cannot attribute to Satan. Hallelujah. Don't sit down and let the devil destroy your health and your life. One month you find out that something is beginning to happen to you. You got up in the morning and your legs is as if you cannot walk. Later by evening, it looks like it's your back. The next day you find out all four children, you, you go to your office and find out files are getting missing. These are signs. Don't sit down until it gets complicated and destroys you. From its infancy, you attack it in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. This is a semblance of hell and darkness. Therefore, I stand by the authority that is in the Lord Jesus Christ and I, I rebuke this. It is your kingdom responsibility to understand warfare. There are some of you right now, the darkness that seems to be, to be roaming around your life, I'm praying for you that you will have the grace to wake up and take responsibility. I have a responsibility to pray for you, but pray for me, pray for me has landed many people to their grave. You must take responsibility as God grants you grace. Wake up in the night, especially when the seasons are already giving you a sign that this is the devil attacking you. Abide with me fast falls the even tide the darkness deepens lord with me abide when all the help has fall and comfort flee help of the helpless oh abide with Jesus, when it was time for him to get to the cross, he took out time to pray. He prayed to build stamina. He prayed, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Let me give you the last one, and then we'll pray. Is someone learning? The seventh key as revealed from scripture that controls longevity is walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 proverbs 3 13 we're reading down to 18 happy is the man that findeth wisdom koinonia please look up and the man that getteth understanding next verse please he said for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold 15. she is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her 16 now length of days there you find it again with wisdom length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor the bible says collect both the right and the left hands are open for you as far as wisdom is concerned wisdom is a giver don't collect wealth and riches and live length of days 17 reading to 18 now her ways are the ways of pleasantness all her parts are peace she is a tree of life a tree of what life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Listen, there is a very direct relationship between walking in wisdom and longevity. For instance, paying attention to your health is wisdom. Paying attention to your health. Revelations 22, please give it to us, verse 2. Paying attention to your health, what you eat. The Bible says, and in the midst of the street, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Let me tell you, believers, there are times that you may do everything well, 
and kill yourself simply because of carelessness and lack of wisdom there are many people today this is the balance because people focus on the spirituality of longevity and then they forget the other aspects like that which pertains onto their health I showed you our medical stand we have an intelligent team of medical doctors and even though we are a ministry that believes in signs and wonders there has been an advocacy for a long time in the body of Christ as in a bid to demonstrate the excellency of the divine life which is true subliminally we men of God have programmed members and programmed people into rejecting anything that has to do with medicine or the science of wellness we have thrown it away and said it does not matter the Bible says man shall live by two things one bread two words there is the physical aspect there is the spiritual aspect man does not live by words alone and man does not live by bread alone if your words are correct and your bread is wrong you will die if your bread is correct and the words are wrong you will die both bread and words have to be in place this is Jesus teaching now are we together now for many of us you have done well the words are correct the spiritual investments are correct but my goodness there is death in the pot in fact let's go to that scripture death in the pot elisha let me search for it now death in the pot it, second kings 4 from verse 38 second kings 4 38 and elisha came to gilgal and there was death in the land famine now and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto his servant um can you give us niv again let me make reference to niv i just want your understanding right he says he said to his servant put on a large pot and cook some stew for this man reading to 41 next verse one of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine whatever that is we know it is not good he found a wild vine. He gathered some of its gods and filled the fold of his cloak. When he returned, he cut them into the pot of stew. Though no one knew what they were. 40. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat, remember they were prophets too, they cried out, O oh man of God, there is death in the pot how many pots today have death in it there are many pots in restaurants that have death there are many pots in our homes you think it is food you are eating the prophet said death is not only found in the grave it can be found even in the pot you can cast the one in the grave but have you casted the death that is in the pot and they could not eat it 41 Elisha said get some flour and he put it into the pot and said serve it to the people to eat and there was nothing harmful in the pot listen ladies and gentlemen can I be honest with you there are many many believers and the unfortunate thing is that because largely in Africa and Nigeria we come from a background of deprivation please listen when God begins to bless us the first thing we focus on is getting exterior things to prove that our life is working rather than focusing on our health so chances are excellent that when things begin to work out you want to get a car you want to get a house you want to get a nice cloth and people say my god things are changing in your life and then we punish ourselves dying inside and looking at life outside there are many people who are careless over their bodies and their health today and sincerely they have the power to invest just a little in their health there are many believers who hate medical checkup they say no this is demonic there are many believers i've told you that science and medical people will tell us that many diseases would have been solved if the people were attentive enough to detect it at infancy and to deal with it most people resort to medicine as a last resort i have taught you here ladies and gentlemen and for some of you who may be hearing it for the first time medicine is not anti-spirituality my perspective of medicine 
I hope you know that Luke was a doctor. He was the disciple of Jesus, Dr. Luke. Hallelujah. It's true that Jesus rose up from the dead. But what about those who took care of his body for three days? The body did not just lie down in the cold on the cross. Someone wrapped, the woman said she came to clean the body. So there is a place for medicine. Listen, listen. If you don't believe this, you will, you will rubbish yourself. It is true that divine health and healing is real. Don't get me wrong. But remember, it is a journey of transition in the spirit to attain unto that point where you can walk in health in experience. And while you are on that journey, by the time you are afflicted and you pray, and it looks like nothing is happening ladies and gentlemen even if something is happening it is wise to consult the doctors if you are truly healed medicine will not fight your miracle <laughs> hallelujah there are people dying in silence your heart is palpitating you almost cannot, you can't climb the stairs. You don't know what is wrong. At least let them tell you what is wrong. Then you can now choose. If you want to go the path of faith, you are not going on blind faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Madam, you try to conceive once, twice, three times. It looks like it's not working. Don't just sit down and say, I know it is a demon in my spirit. Go and see a doctor. Have a discussion. Let them find out what is wrong. Then if it defines medicine, that's why God put both the doctors and us. Respectfully speaking, I tell you, believers are very careless over their health. Very, very careless. Hallelujah. There are many of us who continue to eat all kinds of things, including overeating. I respect your perspective about food, but let me give you an honest advice. Even if fasting did not have any spiritual reward, I can tell you, ask anybody, fasting, eating every day, anytime, anytime you see food is lost. You have to repent. The name of that lust is gluttony. And it kills. It kills. Hallelujah. And by the way, let me tell you, don't say, I am not very fat. It doesn't mean you are free. It doesn't mean you are free. Hear what I'm saying now. So don't get into that deception that until you look like you are you have weight and then mm -mm. there are many people who are about dying diabetes all kinds of things kidney failure different troubles in their bodies and they don't care until the day they collapse for some of you by this teaching you may need to go to, and do a medical checkup what are you afraid of do a medical checkup if they say you are fine has that not strengthened your faith Hallelujah. Pay attention to the kind of water you drink as God grants you grace. Pay attention to the kind of food you eat. Many of us, you see food that is already beginning to spoil. Plus Jesus minus Satan. Amen. You just warm it in the microwave and death in the pot. You want to find out more about nutrition? Don't, I'm, I'm not the person to, there are many people who are gifted and graced. Go to the medical stand. They will guide you. It is not seen to be under very good organic supplements. They can help you. Many of these things we keep taking and feeling like we are rich. It is death. Minimize some of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And more than minimizing these things, Please, I impart upon you the grace to fast. Even if you don't want to pray, just fast and sleep with no food. It is still a level of liberty you are administering to your body. Hallelujah. There are people who will never drink up to one bottle of water in a day. They will drink five bottles, Sprite, coca-cola any other one and you see people in a restaurant four wraps of swallow and three kinds of soup half of chicken only you and then three bottles and then one tiny pure water you are this is death I, I i i hate to be a bearer of bad news but i owe you a responsibility to tell you it is not the manifestation of wealth And 
we have all kinds of cultural things i suffered now is my time you you, you you want to live long remember the last key walking in wisdom please laugh but pay attention laugh but pay attention hallelujah laugh but pay attention and you know in many cultures the proof of honor is food the proof of honor is what so one person can visit five families between 12 to 6 and everywhere he goes you went here they gave you yam you just went to say hi to the other neighbor there's pounded yam then the other one there's rice the other one there's fish and you ate all Appa. In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 